So what we're going to do today is we are going to um, create patterns and I'm going to keep my swatches palette open so that you can see this as we build them. Uh, patterns are kind of cool. They're, they're not overly complicated. We have an entire tool here in Illustrator to create them. Um, and they're a great way to create something that you can share uh, with others because you can actually export swatches. Um, you can export swatches as AIs or as ASEs and you can share them with others so they can have the swatches you create. And you can also explore things like color schemes if you're working in interior design or a fashion. Um, you can create different kinds of patterns from one another um, and create variations and options um, of related patterns. So what I'm going to do is create a really simple pattern at first. We're going to just create a polka dot pattern. Okay, so I'm going to click on uh, my tool uh, for a rectangle or my shape tool and I'll find the ellipse tool. You can see here L is the shortcut key. And I'm going to give my ellipse tool a color, no stroke, so I'll turn my stroke to none and I'll just hold shift and create this dot. Okay, now this is a pretty big dot. So if I did a dot pattern this size, you know, it might be a little too big. So maybe I'll scale it down just a little bit so you get the idea. Okay, um, with this object selected, I'm going to now go up to my window. And it's the window menu, I'm so sorry, window menu. And at the uh, bottom here, it's all in alphabetical order. So I'm going to select pattern options. So I can see that. Okay, so that's a window that I just opened, pattern options. And then I'm going to go up to my object menu. And uh, within the second to last grouping here, underneath shape and path, we have pattern. Okay, so uh, if I hover over that, I'll see a flyout menu that allows me to make a pattern. And it will tell me now the new pattern has been added to the swatches panel. If you ever get a window like this, read it so that you know what Illustrator's doing. So now I'm going to look at this swatch panel and just double check. And I see that this pattern has been added. It looks like a little orange circle. And then this warns me, any changes made while in pattern editing mode is going to be applied to this swatch, so this little swatch here, upon exiting. All right, so that's why it's important to read these things because they're kind of directing you to new windows and pay attention to um, maybe something that Illustrator just created for you. So I'm gonna say okay. And now I see my pattern. It's a preview of the pattern, so it's giving me multiples. and. In my pattern options window, it went from being all gray to now being live. So I can change things. I can change everything from the name of the pattern. I'll call it orange polka dot. Okay, I can change the type. So let's say I want it to be brick by row or hex. You can kind of preview what this looks like. Well, you are previewing what this pattern will look like. And the pattern is to scale. It's very difficult. Um, you have to change your settings if you want your pattern to scale up and down to your shapes, but by default, typically does not scale. Um, and let's do brick by row. All right, it has the width and height, which was based on the size of the shape that I created initially. So you can size your tile to the art or move tile with the art. So it just kind of changes the way you do things. So if I click size tile to the art, I can then add something called H spacing, which is just horizontal spacing. Okay, I'm just using my arrows here to go up and down, take a look at that. And I can also change my vertical spacing. Okay. So you have control over that when you um, change these selections. You can even define how shapes within a pattern overlap one another. And that's defined through these little icons here. Um, that can be really important if you have a really dense pattern where things are gonna be overlapping. Typically with polka dots, you by default do not have anything overlap. But if you did have something complicated, I mean, I'm thinking 
uh, chinoiserie or um, some other illustrated sort of, you know, like floral pattern, you may want to determine how each pattern tile overlaps one another. And then when it shows you copies, this is just how it's going to give you your preview. Copies is just showing you kind of how it works. Um, it will, it will, uh, the copies will impact the number of paths created when you create your um, pattern in another object. And if you expanded the pattern, um, that's something we do in typography. Okay. Sorry about that text that just came through it about an email. Okay, so uh, sh so then if you turn off show tile edge, show swatch bounds, you can do that. Okay, so pretty simple. So I've made some adjustments here. I think it looks pretty good. And um, what I can do is I can just select done. If I created save a copy, it would create a new swatch in my swatch palette. So I'm just going to say done. And now you can see my swatch was updated. And just to give you an idea, I'll just create a rectangle here. And I'll uh, make sure my fill swatch is forward and select that swatch for my palette. OK, so that's a simple pattern, polka dots. OK, now a more complicated pattern that you could create might be something like I used to I used to love showing this, but I'll show it today. Um, plaid. Plaid's a great one. Okay, so uh, let's take our rectangle tool. Let's just build a couple of rectangles here with different colors. I'll do a rectangle here with um, an interesting color. Okay. All right, and then let's give it a yellow. Okay, and I'll just just it's up to you you can do whatever colors you want I'm gonna move this behind everything else so remember to move things behind uh, command or control shift left bracket right bracket forward and backwards um, command on a Mac control I believe on a PC and shift okay and then left and right bracket okay um, that'll bring it all the way forward or all the way backwards I'm gonna select all of these objects and I'm just going to adjust their opacity, bring it to like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was not paying attention. I'm doing the, I'm doing the opacity for a stroke. That's not what I meant to do. Um, I'm just going to select the opacity of the entire object. There we go. Maybe just bring it down to like 85, 87. That looks good. Okay, and then um, what we'll do is we can uh, select these objects, navigate to our object menu, select pattern, make. Okay, it's telling me it's already been added to the swatches and I can make changes now. Okay, so what we're seeing right now is the pattern and we're, we have these little white gaps. So this is really when that horizontal and vertical spacing comes in handy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take notice. There's um, uh, a little bit of a gap in my horizontal and probably I should have done, been much more careful when I built my rectangles. I didn't align them or make them the same height. So that was my mistake. So what I'll do is I'll bring these all together. We get a little overlap. So where there's overlap, you're seeing these sort of darker rectangles. And I think it looks kind of cool for plaid. Um, but if that's not what you wanted, what I would suggest you do is actually go back and make sure these rectangles are exactly the same height and exactly aligned using your alignment. And then you won't get any of these little dark overlapping patterns, but you can you can bring horizontal and vertical spacing into negative and what that does is that will close any of the white spaces that you're getting that you don't like. Okay, and then you can also overlap more if you really like the way it looks where it overlaps where you get those darker spaces. If you want those um, to be more prominent, just increase that so that there's more overlap for transparency. 
And the point of me showing this to you is that you're seeing that characteristics of each shape are applied throughout the pattern. So these rectangles, because I lowered the opacity to, I think it was 87, you can still see through them even as the pattern is being created. And so where they're overlapping, you get a little bit darker um, or more opaque, right? Um, and that gives you an idea. And then in here, even though I'm only adjusting using pattern options, just know that you can adjust the location of any object while you're in your pattern builder, okay? And um, you can move these around. Um, you can edit the path or duplicate the path if you want it to be denser, you want it to be, um, you know, a different color you can do all of these edits right here in this path builder and as soon as you're done it will save that swatch so don't feel like just because you built this at the beginning you're married to that design um, of course you can you can change these things okay so in here while you're in illustrator you can make changes to any path you can build a new path um, or edit the paths that you have Okay, so you can make it as complicated and dense or um, uh, simple as possible. And of course, we're using rectangles, but if these could be any shape, any, um, it could be, like I said, floral patterns or, you know, um, animals or whatever kind of pattern you'd want. Uh, so once I'm happy with my pattern, again, I'll say done. And um, now, I'll create another rectangle here and then I'll click my pattern swatch and we can see that pattern and this pattern see-through so you can or, or transparent I should say so you can see behind it um, if you don't want the pattern to be transparent you want that white space to be filled what you can do is you can edit this pattern by just double clicking that swatch in the swatch panel go back in here and to make it fully opaque what you want to do is make sure that the tile has a um, oops, a solid color. I'm going to move that color to the back using Command Shift left bracket or uh, Control Shift left bracket if you have a PC. I'll give it a new color so you can see this. And what you want to do is you want the back to be totally filled in with this background color, with this background um, swatch. So really you want the swatch to be exactly the same size as your tile. Okay, so you're kind of looking at this boundary, this blue boundary that's visible and trying to adjust that. And I'm, I'm missing something here by getting, I still get this purple line. So you might need to make some minor adjustments. So it, it takes some work, um, uh, but that's the idea is that you know you can sort of figure out this pattern um, and give it and that will make it opaque so if I press done now it's an opaque pattern you can't see through it okay and you can of course spend more time making it perfect but I did not do that okay and uh, now that we started with these shapes we can delete those now because they're saved within your pattern right you can always go back in and um, edit edit your swatch by just double clicking that pattern swatch in the swatches panel make changes you could even make a new copy okay um, but that's a great introduction to swatches and um, you can always save this again save as will allow you to save it for a PDF um, if you want a JPEG or something else export for screens will allow you to do that.